I would say that Asian Americans were beginning to feel like, do you guys view us as expendable? Oh, like, man. Like What's going on guys? David and Andrew here. I hope you guys are maintaining some social distance. What up? Hey, we've got some serious things to talk about. Some Woo. positive things to talk about. Yup. But positive news first. Okay, on the positive side, the Fung Bros as a channel, we are gonna be donating $3,500 amongst two charities that are helping aid people during the crisis right now. So the first charity is gonna be helping healthcare professionals get the safety equipment that they need to do their job properly and to keep them safe because you know, a lot of people are short on supplies right now. The second charity is actually going to be help feeding kids who are coming from low income families right now who have trouble getting food because you know, there's a lot of people in need. You got an online store called Hype to Help where you can gum, cop some items and then 100% of those proceeds are gonna go to charity. 1750 to each of these charities. We gotta get into some complicated but important topics. Woo! One of the things that we wanna accomplish here is to actually start a real dialogue about this. Let me just preface this video. We are not being negative towards anyone. We're just calling it how we see it. So for you guys, we have two different lists today. The first list is three thoughts on the anti-Asian racism surrounding the coronavirus. And then the second list is three ways to combat racism. Yeah. Actionable items. Number one, list number one. The anti-Asian racism is real and increasing the longer that America is affected by the coronavirus. Yeah, and, and this by now I feel like is a fact. I mean, you've seen the cases pop up, they've gone viral, you're hearing about this happen all across the world. Anti-Asian racism is on the rise, but that also does not mean that every single person is going through racism right now. Just talking about statistically, this is being tracked by a lot of smart people and it's just like shooting up. This seems to be happening even globally, not just in America, in Australia, in the UK, even in other parts of Asia that right. you wouldn't expect. And the logic behind the racism is that Asian looking people are responsible for the virus. And if anybody feels like the world is gonna collapse or all the terrible things that are happening as a result of it, basically they're blaming it on people who look Asian. And the only reason that that was our first point is because I think to some people, anti-Asian racism is still not really like a real thing. Point number two, it seems like the powers that may be do not really have anti-Asian racism as a top priority right now. By the way, I do acknowledge that recently uh, the administration came out and said, don't target Asian Americans, they're great people. It's important that we totally protect our Asian American community in the United States and all around the world. They're amazing people and the spreading of the virus is not their fault in any way, shape, or form. No, no, he said, he said, Asian Americans. Right, he well, yeah, he it was very awkward. It was but awkward, but he said it. He acknowledged it. We gotta say, give him props for that. Yeah, let's not forget what he had said earlier, which kind of like led to this. As much as the administration is acknowledging it now, I think we also have to wonder like, how much is it gonna make up for what happened? Can it have a reverse? reaction right, right, right. and kind of make up for it? I don't know. Was the damage already done? Right. And to be honest, a lot of damage was done. Point number three, the racism against Asians is happening at like three different levels. Okay, what's the street level? Okay. Level two is the suburban level and level one is the geopolitical level. Right. So the street level is the one that everybody's familiar with. A lot of like, if you get punched on the street, you get punched on yeah. the subway. This is public transportation. That's just like, walking out. I mean, know? I think these are the most like brutal and surprising videos that people have seen. Like these are the ones that are shocking. These are the ones going viral. These are the ones that are getting people really, really angry, which I totally understand. I mean, I was angry seeing some of that too. So depending on what neighborhood you're living in right now in America, I know some of my friends, especially that are living on the East Coast, they don't want their mom to walk to the store by herself, especially if she's got a mask and gloves and protective gear on. Just a really, really bad situation. Level two is more of the suburban level. And these are the videos coming out of like Target, coming out of like type of store. Obviously the incident at Sam's Club where the whole family got stabbed, that was a mixture of two and three. Level two is like maybe the most unexpected because it's middle class, it's in happening in suburbs. When all this anxiety and all this pressure sets in from the current environment, whether it's quarantine or people saying that, you know, curfews, basically it's like causing people's middle class niceties and facade to melt away. Yeah. And they're really just like acting, you know, emotional. It's usually very verbal and it really shocks your comfort zone. You know, right. these are things that kind of rock you to be like, damn, nah, people really are like that. They really felt that way this whole time. Like, let's say for example, you cough and someone's like, yo, don't cough around me. Your people are responsible for this, don't you know? That would be level two. Yeah. And level one 
is sort of like the geopolitical jousting. This is almost like happening at the most elite levels. It's tough for us to understand, but it's like when countries are doing battle and there's just a lot of things at stake, whether it's economics, reputation, just blame game, power jousting. People are trying to maintain control of their own populations. Right. So as regular citizens who are not involved in the political game, sometimes we feel like we have no impact in this. I just have my own life. I can yeah. only take care of myself. You know? I think that Asian Americans felt like collateral damage and in fodder, or maybe even to some extent, I'm not taking it to this level. I would say that Asian Americans were beginning to feel like, do you guys view us as expendable? <sighs> Oh like, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, I, I think that was a feeling. That was a feeling. We'll see actually like in terms of action, whether that's yeah. like signing a bill or a law or an act. So those are the three thoughts. Just to recap guys. One, I do think that the racism against Asians in the face of the coronavirus is real. Yep. I do think it's increasing. Number two, I do think that there are some questions on the powers that be how much they prioritize Asian American safety. And number three, guys, it's just happening at three levels. And everybody that's watching online, whether they're going through it in their real life or not, I hope you guys can see the three levels manifest themselves now. The three levels are street, suburban, and then geopolitical, right? Anyway, Andrew, how can we combat it? What are three Ooh, thoughts that we have yeah. to combat the racism? Uh, Solutions. This is, this is gonna be useful because a lot of people are wondering like, what can I do? What should I do? How should I feel? What's the first the thing? The first point that I have that I think the most Asians can do to combat racism is have a real dialogue about it with you know the people around mm -hmm. you and have a real plan. Yes. We already acknowledge that racism against Asians is increasing. So you gotta have a plan. You gotta understand where you fall in this, uh, what kind of area you live in, what are the chances that you're going to experience different levels of racism. Right, right? and what level do you think is more possible? Yeah. If you live in the inner city right now, level three is the one you should be looking out it's for. It's possible, yeah, totally. And you gotta be vigilant, you gotta stay alert, and you gotta have a dialogue with your friends and family. And me and you are not self defense instructors. No, I'm not an expert on but this. But let me just say this, I did do some research Watched a couple for, YouTube for this video. I mean, situational awareness is probably the number one thing that everybody can do to combat racism. Situationally aware means that wherever you are, in whatever environment, you're just increasing your radar scan. That like you're crossing the street, guys. You have your head down into your phone and you have like AirPods in. Your situational Especially awareness- Especially AirPod yeah. Pros, because those really block out yeah. the noise. Your, situa your situational awareness radius is tiny. Right. You need to have your head up, be scanning, and just know what's around you, yeah. what's coming in, what's coming out of the environment. You need to get your radar shield range way out further. Yeah, just to have a plan and not panic, okay? Just have a real dialogue and have a real plan, guys. Like sending memes and stuff or sending videos to each other being like, oh man, that's messed up. Right. That's not gonna happen to me. Those, those are all human reactions, but those are actually not plans. Yes. Point number two, we gotta enlist the, our non-Asian friends to help us out. We need allies. Yeah, we need allies. And I do have to give a big shout out to Cardi B because I thought Cardi B probably made one of the best videos. Let's stop being xenophobic. Let's stop having crazy anger because I've been seeing a lot of Asians get beat up. And it's crazy to think, you know, I'm just referencing Cardi B like it's a college paper, but like it's very important to have people like her because she has reached to people that Asians cannot necessarily speak to or maybe are not listening to any Asians at the moment. And as much as Asians amongst ourselves are talking about, oh, don't do this, don't do this to Asians, don't do this to Asians. It's true that that might be in an echo chamber somewhat, you know, so you need to get that message out of the bubble, out of the echo chamber and into the rest of the world so that it can affect other people. Number three, Andrew, our last piece of advice that we thought of to combat anti-Asian racism is find a role that fits your skill set. Yes. And I think there's a lot of different roles, guys. There's roles for people to, you know, bust out the camera and record. There's a role for somebody who's really yeah. good at internet research to be an internet detective. I want to stress to people that you do not have to be willing to fight another human to help out in combating racism. There are so many levels to do it. Internet detective, let's say you want to stay mostly on the internet, stay out of harm's way. Listen, there's a lot of stuff you can do on the internet. It's very powerful now. And I got to give a shout out to all yeah. those uh, Instagram or Twitter accounts like uh, Jackfruit, Next Shark. Next Shark, stuff like that. All those guys, you yeah. know. Let's say you see something racist happen, not to you, but to somebody in the street, record it, report it, yeah. bust your phone out. 
you know, send it to the right people. You don't even want to deal with any of the negativity at all, Andrew. I think that there's a great role for somebody who just wants to do good works and highlight good works that Asians are doing to combat the coronavirus. Exactly. Now, let's say you don't like confrontation at all. You're not ready for that. You're not equipped to do that. That's totally fine. What you can do is highlight, repost good things that people are doing. There's just so many ways people can help. Be in constant communication with each other, share supplies, share knowledge, and it doesn't always have to be just about Asians, Asians, Asians. Like we're saying, you can be doing good things for anybody. We're not donating $3,500 just to Asian doctors. It's no. to any doctor, it anybody. To any bro. healthcare professional that is and, helping us get through this and crisis. not just Asian kids, we're donating to any kid. We are trying to fight the virus, not other humans right now, guys. Now is the time that, you know, we can really make a difference, really flatten this curve. As much as we want to flatten the racism against Asians curve, that's another curve we got to worry about. I mean, first and foremost, humans got to help flatten this curve of the virus, so. And teamwork makes the dream work, guys. Plan, plan, and plan. And the dream is to actually get rid of the coronavirus right now. The dream is not to find somebody to blame for the coronavirus. In the comments down below, let us know what are some other tips and plans that you guys have for yourselves and how else you guys are preparing. Um, go ahead, share your stories in the comments below. It's just good to have just a lot of people talking about it, you know? Definitely, guys, check out Hype to Help. It is our online shop right now. We're selling Bape, Supreme, Stone Island, all that stuff. 100% of the proceeds, again, are going to two charities, okay? All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching again uh we're gonna do more of these videos from the car social distancing until next time fun bros we out peace